Well, we'll get something very special today. We're spending my own money. That's basically what this amounts to. But what did I pick to spend with my own money? It's a box from System 76. What does it contain? Well, probably a laptop, right? But there's more than that in there. <laughs> so the year is 2023. And for the first time in a long time, travel is on the menu. I'm gonna go to Computex. I mean, there's all kinds of channel travel too. I still do the computer janitoring thing. Although at this point, I'm really just doing the computer janitoring for the, the stuff that I want to do, not the stuff that I have to do in order to eat. That's nice. And that's thanks to you, all of you. Thank you for watching and subscribing and Patreon and Floatplane and buying the merchandise and the KVMs and everything else. Anyway, so, you know, you don't just run out and buy a bunch of stuff and then send back what doesn't work. Well, unless you're a terrible human being and then, then you might do that. That's why Amazon and Walmart have such a really high return policy. So shopping around for a laptop, the pangolin caught my eye and I'll explain why in a minute, but also on the table for consideration were laptops like the Lenovo uh, X1 and the Carbon series. There's actually several different uh, options uh, in the Lenovo family. And not really that long ago, I did actually pick up a Lenovo laptop um, for another project, but the wireless in it was so crappy that I was compelled to do a video on replacing the wireless adapter in that laptop. And it's a convertible too. Um, I've sort of fallen out of love with convertibles and using the screen as an input device, especially on the Linux side of things. Uh, it's just, it didn't really work for me. Uh, I looked at the developer edition of the Dell, which is intermittently in and out of stock. And it seemed like procurement was maybe gonna be a little bit, bit of an issue on the Dell side. And I also like what System76 is doing. We don't need another desktop environment. System76 is doing some really exciting stuff with Rust, in my opinion. And I know it's definitely the old joke of, Oh, there were 13 standards, and then let's create a new standard to unify them all. Oh, there were 14 standards. There is a <laughs> there is an element of truth to that. I really like Pop! OS. I think Pop! OS is the right direction to go in for Linux for normies, let's call it. I certainly do not agree with every decision that they've made, but that doesn't detract from the good that they're doing. Just like, I hope that you don't agree with literally everything that I do, and when I make a mistake, I hope that you don't make it your personal mission to take me down or troll me on the internet or whatever, because I, you know, I see that kind of behavior a lot of the time and I just, I don't know. Anyway, System76, welcome. Okay, cool, what's, what's in the welcome packet? System76, thank you for purchasing System76 computer if you're not already a Linux user. The System76 crew, cool. And some stickers, this is awesome. This harkens back to the, you know, Apple computer when Apple was cool. I mean, that's such, it's a lifetime ago. They would include stickers, which is pretty cool. Oh, we got a little pop-up robot. Follow the yellow line cut out and strip and stand. The desktop sentinel, Melvin. That's cool. A power brick, 65 watts. Now, contrast this to the 65 watts that we've been seeing from our small form factor desktop machines we've been reviewing. Obviously, it's possible to make a more compact 65 watt power supply. That's what this is. And System76 has gone out of their way to include that, which is really awesome. And the power cord itself is modular. So actually the power cord is bigger and takes up more room than the actual power brick. And this is it. This is the Pangolin. Now, I picked out a configuration with 32 gigabytes of memory, a single one terabyte PCIe 4 NVMe, and the 6800U for the processor. The reason that I picked System76 is as much to do with the system specs that were available and how this thing is built. This is a magnesium alloy case. This is metal. So this is a very, very durable construction. It has ample breathing vents at the back. And so like the physical design and the physical components of this, you can see there's a dual fan design, one here, one over here. It's got a Radeon 680M for the GPU. This is a Linux laptop through and through, first of all. I mean, look, they've got a physical flip down RJ45 connector. That's all just gravy. The design is metal. So 
the first laptop that I really fell in love with, like fell in love with hard and didn't see it as just a machine to get stuff done with, is the Sony Z505. It was not class leading in terms of performance or features or anything else, but it had a modular battery and it had a really nice magnesium alloy case and it used the magnesium alloy case as a heat sink for the processor. And so it cooled its, I think it was a Pentium 3 processor. It cooled its processor really well, but it was ultra low voltage and it was really well designed. So it didn't quite have to work as hard. And that's basically the formula for the System76 Pangolin. Solid metal case, solid construction, modular design. It's got some repairability. It's not super glued together. It's a laptop first and foremost. This is not a touch screen, not as I've configured it. It is 1080p up to 144 Hertz for the display. It has a nice feeling keyboard. It has a big, big touchpad that they put a lot of work into in terms of the driver and functionality. Nice mechanical power button. Got an SD card slot on the side, a type A port, a lock slot. And then on the other side, we've got two more type A, a type C, headphone microphone combo, HDMI out, power, and then our physical switch. This is the design formula of that Z505. And this is also a similar design formula that Lenovo has hit upon in some of their designs occasionally. Sometimes the Yoga, sometimes the you know, ThinkPad, some Carbon X1. Sometimes they dilute things with the ThinkPad and the ThinkPad is not an enjoyable experience. But this, this is solid. All right, let's get this thing booted up and see what it can do. If you want to experience the System76 out of the box setup, all you got to do is install Pop! OS. It's basically the identical process. Setting it up, getting Linux configured, opting for home encryption or not. It's all good stuff, ticks all the boxes, no complaints there. The very first thing that I noticed about the touchpad is that it's a dual clicker. I don't really know how to explain that. People are very particular about their touchpads, very particular. This touchpad appears to have buttons on both the left and right side. You can also tap to click. So if you're a tap to clicker, so you tap your finger, but you don't press down on the touchpad, it's fine. You're not gonna notice anything. But if you press down harder on the touchpad, it'll click with a tactile click because there's a button underneath the touchpad. A lot of the time touchpads only have a single button and use software magic to look at where your finger is to decide is that a left click or a right click. This touchpad physically has two buttons underneath it. So if you move your finger from the left to right side and you're pressing too hard on it, you'll feel a second click. Doesn't bother me, but some people may be unsettled by the second click or not understand what's going on or think that, you know, the touchpad is giving mechanically in an unsettling way, in a way that was not designed to and had a very fast update rate, which We'll find out about the out of the box screen refresh in just a minute because maybe it's a combination of those two factors. Now pop out of the box walks you through your preferences choices, not just light or dark mode, but also how do you want the application bar at the bottom to respond? Do you need workspaces or applications? If you're coming from another platform, Windows or Mac OS, you might be used to certain things like gestures, but not other things like multiple workspaces. Linux sort of gives you the best of both worlds. There's even this thing called a tiling window manager. That's something a little more advanced you can set up, but the tiling window manager stuff that's built into Pop! OS is actually quite good. If you're feeling adventurous and you want to activate the tiling window manager, you can do Super Y, again, built into Pop! OS. You can download that and try that now on the G9 Neo, where it's so super, super, super insanely wide. It makes it a lot of fun. The laptop also has a built-in fingerprint scanner in the power button, so if you want to use biometric locking, uh, make it a little easier to log into your machine, you can do that with your fingerprint in the power button. Out of the box, 144 hertz to start with, and the power usage says that it's gonna last about eight and a half hours on 84% charge right out of the box. I can imagine people were wishing for this kind of thing after using Linux, even in the late 90s, but here we are in 2023, and it's an out of the box experience. Good job, System76. Now out of the box, I need to install OBS so I can screen capture and do some recordings. And I'm also gonna install the CPU Freak GNOME extension, which is pretty awesome normally. On a laptop, I don't know that I recommend it because having it in the background polling, constantly doing stuff, does negatively impact how many watts you're using. I caution you because out of the box, before I start fiddling with things, idle power consumption is about six watts. And now with all this stuff running in the background, 
it's more like nine or 12 watts, which is not fabulous for our battery life. We go from eight hours to four hours or nine hours to roughly four or five hours having a bunch of background stuff. You don't need that. Power top from the command line can give you a breakdown of what's using all of your power. As we can see OBS and the GNOME shell extensions that I just added or what's using all the power. This is a really cool level of granularity. You can run a power report like this on Windows laptops, but it's a little bit more of a pain, although it does give you sort of a fancy HTML report when you do that, but I've always loved the accessibility of this kind of stuff on a Linux platform. Now to help us with testing, we're gonna use the Pharonix test suite. Open benchmarking and Pharonix specifically have a lot more testing, more comprehensive testing, better testing using their test suite, but I just sort of want to use it to kick the tires. You can use the Pharonix test suite on your laptop to do some of the same kinds of automated tests just to make sure it's performing roughly where it should. I mean, this 6800U processor from AMD, the, the six and 7,000 series processors from AMD in particular, and especially AMD Advantage laptops, this is not AMD Advantage as far as I know, but especially AMD Advantage, mean that they've put all of the same love and care into tuning the system that I've seen so far from System76. And that means that it's gonna perform well, it's not gonna have any you know, substandard components, because sometimes people look at how much memory does it have, and how big is the hard drive, and how fat, you know, what processor it is. But then the laptop designer will skimp on cooling or will skimp on the quality of the components. This laptop also has a physical privacy switch, and if we do LSUSB with the switch toggled and untoggled, we can see that the device is physically unplugged from the USB bus. That is very, very nice. Some laptops implement a mechanical shutter for their webcam. In this case, it mechanically unplugs the webcam. So you're not gonna get audio or video from an unplugged webcam device. And I was honestly kind of surprised at the price point. I mean, economic, macroeconomic conditions as all the companies have, uh, you know, sort of taken to saying. I really wasn't expecting this laptop to be as relatively inexpensive as it was. In this configuration, it's ballpark, I think $1,400, $1,300, something like that. Uh, I was shooting for like $1,500 or $1,600, $1,700 for a laptop, so I was pleasantly surprised that it came in pretty far under budget with LP DDR5, 32 gigabytes, and storage, almost splurged for larger storage, but I ultimately decided to just add my own storage later because there's actually two M.2 slots that are accessible inside this. So I get the one with the one terabyte drive the System76 shipped and if I have to dual boot or you know do something creative with virtual machines then I have a whole other M.2 slot that I can use for that purpose. What about off-label uses? AMD's been sneaking in PCIe tunneling their USB-C ports. Will that work on this platform? I don't know, let's give it a try. In case you're wondering about Thunderbolt support, well, I hauled out the uh, the old monitor and the old dock just to give it a try and see if I could get it to work. And in the out of the box configuration, it's not gonna work. And I, I don't blame System76 for not wanting to support that. Also tooled around the BIOS looking for options to enable PCIe tunneling on AMD's USB controller. There's none of that. I also had a weird problem when I first plugged in the Thunderbolt dock because it also enables power. And sometimes in that scenario, touch pads will go a little haywire. It's very strange. It was like registering phantom clicks, but that was totally an RF thing and rebooting the controller in the touchpad fixes that. And that's not really a System76 problem. That's just a thing that happens. Now it may be possible to hack support for PCIe tunneling, AKA Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt compatible. Uh, functionality into the System76 Pangolin, but that's not something System76 really supports or condones, and I don't blame them. And it's not really exactly supported yet on the AMD platform universally across the board. You see it in some laptops, but, but not everywhere. Now, in case you want a game or do something really super fancy high-end, DisplayPort is a better bet than HDMI. You can do some really cool stuff with the HDMI out in this laptop, but I'm using our handy dandy Moshi cable. Those are, the Moshi bi-directional USB-C is the highest quality USB-C to DisplayPort cable that I know of. And not only can we rock 144 Hertz on our ASRock Phantom Gaming display, we can also rock 240 Hertz on the ASRock G9 Neo with our Moshi cable. It's that good. In terms of if I had to come up with something to complain about, uh, you know, there's the undertones of that a little bit in the Thunderbolt discussion. More Type-C ports might have been nice, but I can see the Greybeards preferring the Type-A ports, and three Type-A ports on a laptop is sort of a differentiating factor. I can sort of picture how that, you know, board meeting went. It's like, okay, how many USB ports are we gonna put? 
let's do four USB-C ports. You know, that's that's the Apple thing, obviously. And it's like, no, 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 we, we need Type-A. And it's not the token Type-A port that you see on business class laptops from other, other major vendors. You have three full-size Type-A ports. So I feel like most of the people that will be buying this and using it with Linux will probably prefer Type-A over Type-C. I would have liked to have had two Type-C ports, and I would be okay with two Type-A ports, but three Type-A ports and two Type-C ports, that would be the sweet spot. I would give up the HDMI port for that, as a matter of fact. And that pretty much takes us through everything that I look for in a laptop. The Pangolin from System76 is a very, very impressive machine. System76 is not the size of Lenovo. I don't think that's an insult or it's gonna surprise anybody, but the System76 is able to craft such a nice machine, a well put together machine, a well designed machine. It's got the Samsung 980 Pro SSD, so they're not messing around with updated firmware. Good job, because that only happened like a couple weeks ago. So again, they're on the ball in terms of quality control and assembly and everything else. It really is surprising to see somebody put that much love and care in their products in terms of how it's put together and their operating system and everything else, notwithstanding just I want to buy a laptop. I want the laptop to be a laptop. I don't need the laptop to be a symbol of religion or, or anything else. But System76, they're able to do this with a relatively small team and have something that is so competitive against big name laptops is hugely impressive. It's a very nice machine and I'm glad that I went with System76 for uh, for for my, my Linux laptop needs. I'm going to put some more hours on this and uh, Maybe, maybe we'll do a longer term evaluation. We'll, we'll see how it works after it's got about 50,000 air miles on it. I'm Wendell's Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums.